everybody welcome to what the flick god oh my god i can't believe i did that hey everybody welcome to breakfast all day christy lemire alonzo duralde hello uh it's just the two of us this week we can make it if we try that's all just the two of just us. The two of us. Uh, so yeah, uh, got a handful of movies to talk about. And for our Patreon subscribers, we will be digging into some new shows, including The Handmaid's Tale and Netflix's When They See Us. And we'll be talking about trailers for uh, Ad Astra and Britney Runs a Marathon. So if you haven't already joined us at our Patreon page, go check out patreon.com slash BeFast all day. Today is a good day to do it. Absolutely. So I guess we'll start with Dark Phoenix. Do you want to describe what it's about? Oh my God, I don't even know how. So <laughs> Sansa Stark <laughs> flies into space and a bunch of swirly stuff gets sucked into her body and it gives her incredible powers. <laughs> she and then eats she a gets, supernova. And then she gets angry about it. She has this stuff inside of her that she doesn't understand yes. and doesn't want. It's feminine power. And she's daunted by it. <laughs> and uh, the other X-Men try to help her understand it, including Raven and Cyclops. And this is a continuation of the timeline that exists from Days of Future Past and Apocalypse with um, Michael Fassbender as Magneto and James McAvoy. James McAvoy as Professor X, which I have liked previously. I like these actors in these roles. I like going back to the beginning and seeing what they were like before they were as we know them. And you have tremendous actors doing some kind of silly stuff. This is just a mess. Like it, it looks like crap. The mm. effects are terrible. This, I mean, early on, yeah, they go into space to rescue the um, shuttle Endeavor, right? And this is—it's 1992, by the way. And this is how, and and I just did film week on KPCC, and and Tim Cogshell was on with me, and he was saying that he has. He was really confused about what happens when in terms of actual time. Like if this is 92, but then the other X-Men movies happen in 2000, then like how does Jennifer <laughs> Lawrence become Rebecca Romaine? So quickly. Well, apparently <laughs> in, apparently the 2000 <laughs> X-Men is set in the near future. I think that's the dodge. But it's know. also a separate timeline. And uh, the, I don't care. That's Exactly. I, I, I admit that I don't get the, the, the jiggled timelines of these movies at this point. It's like the least of these movies' but, problems. But yeah, but even but but that's not the problem. The problem is just this movie is so mediocre and not interesting. Um, this really does feel like they have run out of steam. You know, this was this was this this is a franchise that's had some real highs, but this one just kind of feels like ah, we just gotta okay. And the thing is, the Dark Phoenix saga in the comics is actually really cool. Like, I don't know anything about her. It is sort of legendary in that it took this character they never quite knew what to do with and made her this immensely powerful being, but so powerful that like she basically destroys an entire planet and then has to go on trial for her crimes and all this stuff happens. And in this one, uh, Bibbs reviewed it for me for the rap and he had a really good parallel with this and Captain Marvel where they're both movies about women who have been given these powers through kind of a freak accident involving like interstellar travel uh, but and 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 being hidden from their true selves and having to 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 come into their own. But he said, whereas Captain Marvel, you know, the idea that she's been brainwashed is bad, and that she's you know getting to like you know take her own agency. This movie tries to let Professor X off the hook for having thrown up all these walls in her mind to shield her from her own childhood trauma. So of course, when she gets powerful and all that stuff comes flooding out. Of course, things go haywire. Right. But, you they, know. but they um, denigrate her and ostracize her and treat it like it's a bad thing. Yeah. They try to help her, but it's entirely condescending. And it's like, oh, you shouldn't have this power. We feel really bad for you because you have it. <laughs> um, it's incredible cast. And so much of what they do, I was just laughing because there's like a giant sequence where Michael Fassbender is just like... All of them at various times. Michael Fassbender especially is like oh, throwing shoving hands. his hands out <laughs> and he's like writhing and twisting and grunting and and I'm like, dude, you're all so much better than this. He's, I know. This movie is so silly and yet it takes itself so seriously. It's like watching nine-year-olds play comic book where they're just like gesticulating a lot. You know? Those of you who are <laughs> hearing us in the podcast and not watching on YouTube aren't getting the full effect of us throwing our hands out and to push things and, away and uh, throwing it that way. And then we're going to throw this thing that way. Then we're going to bring some things together to smush them. So let's talk about the fire alarm. 
because this, <laughs> this is the most interesting part of our experience was um, at the screening that Alonzo and I went to. We were in the same auditorium, yes. and but I guess that happened in every auditorium at the AMC Century City, and that is that the fire alarms went off. Yes. And they happened to go off during the big climactic battle. On the train. On the train with like all the X-Men and all of the Jessica Chastain alien mm-hmm. people. And it's so noisy and so crazy it took me a second to figure out it took that a that long was a fire time alarm. it took a long time to figure out that yeah, this was the fire alarm because it seemed like it was part of the movie you hear this beep beep and it <laughs> sounds like it makes total sense with the chaos that's going sure. on and just the overall cacophony of it all and then when that fight's over and it's quiet you still hear Beep. And you realize, oh, that was not an aesthetic <laughs> choice, but it just blends in with all the insanity. And then they start like strobing these exit lights right. and the house lights came up and they went back down again. So and- yeah, so what happened with us, they, and everyone's looking around our audience like, do we stay? Do we go? <laughs> Fox, to their credit, offered like all these other chances to see the movie before we had to review it. But I was kind of right. like, you know what? I, I was it. I was well out of this thing before the fire right. alarm went I off, get so. it. So yeah, so our auditorium, we all just stayed and then the other auditorium showing this they were all escorted out right at oh a my. at a point where okay so there's a big battle between Jessica Chastain and Jessica um, Chastain by the way who looks exactly like Edgar Winter in this movie <laughs> she's got this straight long white hair and, like, and super pale makeup and like no makeup at all and like white eyebrows um but she and Sophie Turner are having their big showdown and Jessica Chastain says something and you know exactly what Sophie Turner is going to say in response. <laughs> and apparently in the other theater, they cut the movie off right there in between those two lines. And so everyone's waiting for what the obvious response is. But they had to wait like a long time. And then they shepherded them all back into our old theater to watch. Like oh, they wow. re-showed, they re-racked it all. And they showed them all the, the rest of the thing. Oh. I, I'm with you. I didn't need to see it. And they were nice to offer us to go to the premiere. I don't want to go to the premiere yeah, and watch no. it all over again. Yeah, I saw we saw it from start to finish <laughs> with with fire alarm, but the the yeah by that point it was too little too late. But like, that was the most interesting part of the whole experience was like ooh now we have strobe lights. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is this thing where you're like wow this is a movie with. And you start rattling mm-hmm. off, like Jennifer Lawrence is in this movie, and Michael Fassbender is in this movie, and James McAvoy, and you know Jessica Chastain, and all these like super competent, talented actors, and they're just like running around in this silly thing. And and I don't always think that about superhero movies. I'm obviously not condescending about the genre as a whole. I think a lot of them are terrific. I think even a lot of them that are under the X-Men umbrella were terrific. Which ones have you liked? Uh, well, you know, I think X2 still holds up. I think it was terrific. I don't love Logan as much as other people do, but I, I respect what they're doing. And I, I think Logan. a lot of it's really successful. Mm. I mean, the Deadpool movies are technically under the X-Men umbrella. Oh, right. um, you know, I thought but uh, First Class was pretty good. Um, I love Days of Future Days Past. Days of Future Past That one fun. is the best one for me of this timeline of X-Men. Oh, well, be- sure. Because at that point, like, the bit with Quicksilver is still new and exciting. Yes. It was the first <laughs> time they did it, not the second time they yeah. did it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah. So And this one is, I think we've pretty much all agreed, well, it's not as bad as, you know, Origins, Apocalypse, uh-huh. and uh, whatever the Brett Ratner one was. It might be worse than Apocalypse. No, I don't know. This one doesn't have Olivia Munn in a bathing suit going to the uh, <laughs> oh, going to the Auschwitz, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like a selling point. You made that sound interesting just now. <laughs> Nothing that visually interesting happens here at all. It's a lot of like big swirly stuff. We should mention who directed this. This is Simon Kinberg's yes. feature directorial debut. Oh, he has written is it? Yeah, mm, isn't it? I guess it is, yeah. I mean, he's written a bunch of them and yeah. he has been a producer for a long time on these films and other movies like The Martian. He's been around for a long time and he, he directed this. But it's just so clunky. And so early on... There's nothing vital about this movie. Like there's no... no like other X-Men movies, uh, in addition to sort of like the action river, there's at least... They're saying something about the world and they're using mutants as this kind of metaphor for a thing. And this is just like 
blah, 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 things were happening. And, yeah, know. there's no there's no really um, powerful underlying subtext here. Um, but there's yeah a line early on where one of them says like, "Oh, so we're doing space missions now." And I was thinking that too. Like, really? Like they're gonna go to space? <laughs> this sounds like a parody of an X Men idea. Well, like, Let's uh, send them to space. I mean, the, to the do space uh, stuff. The, the, actually, and again in the comics, the X Men did do a lot of sort of interstellar stuff, and there was this whole race called the Shi'ar that they you know mixed it up with, and they, like there were there were interesting. Things things that they went with you're right and this it does just feel like an act of desperation and what the aliens want is just totally banal no they, oh, yeah. they want what uh, aliens always want exactly, when they come to earth exactly yeah <laughs> um yeah this was just uh, it, it it just kind of felt like a a contractual obligation uh-huh. and a waste of time i mean there is literally a big action set piece that revolves around crossing a street Yes. For no apparent reason, <laughs> crossing a street becomes really complicated. It I had to think just... back to remember what you were talking about because that's how little this film has stayed with me. Yeah. So, <laughs> poof, it's, I think it's going to tank. I think it was going to tank anyway. And now, even more so, I, I do. Uh, you know, I, think, I think people didn't, even before people saw it. Yeah. I think yeah. they're like, what is Dark Phoenix? I don't get it. it uh, yeah. I mean, I, and I, I think it's, you know, even if the Disney Fox merger hadn't oh, happened, right. it's exactly. like, this is a movie that feels like we're we're done. We're done. Yeah. We're capping this off. And, you know, I'm sure in about two years they'll reboot the X-Men from scratch and whether or not they interact with the Avengers or whatever. But they'll they'll come up with some new idea that makes it relevant in the way that it was when this thing started. You know, I mean, you know, in those early interviews where Singer talks about how, like, you know, Professor X is my MLK and Magneto is my Malcolm X. And, you know, they're talking about that's when it's like that. That wasn't a stretch. That actually meant something. In That's those an interesting movies. idea. But by now, it's just like, whatever. <laughs> so I'm saying a three. I said four and a half. No, just, you didn't. You said three and a half. Oh, did I? Oh, three. I'm sticking to it then. <laughs> Do number, you, you can change your number. Nope, nope. Numbers are stupid, y'all. Three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Our numbers are 3.3. It's at 23% on the tomato meter. If you are just doggedly, you know, a completist fine whatever but i mean this is nothing special i want to understand jennifer lawrence's hair also by the way she has like the perfect dry bar blowout like the perfect soft beach waves well she she can control her appearance you know that's true. She does not need to go go see a stylist for a blowout. She, is <laughs> she can just do it herself. That's, exactly. I'm glad you understand that. <sighs> okay, right. so well, it's hey, not good. Yeah, no, it is not. So thank you for uh, watching. Do like this video. Go subscribe to our channel. And again, if you have not checked out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash day, it's where we do exclusive member content and other cool stuff. So do check it out. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, bye. Bye.